In this video, I'd like to continue talking about factoring polynomials with complex numbers by looking at one more example problem. And with this problem, Sean tried to write x to the fourth minus 36 as a product of linear factors. And we have his work below. And with this problem, we need to figure out where Sean made a mistake. So with this problem or this type of problem, there are two general strategies. One is that we can work this out ourselves and compare our work to his work, or we can at each step just re-multiply everything back out using distribution and see if we get what we had from the step before. So it's more instructive to work it out ourselves, so let's take that approach, but to check your work you can do it the other way as well. So we will start by rewriting x to the fourth minus 36. And you can notice that this is actually a difference of two squares. In fact, if we rewrite it as x squared squared minus six squared, it becomes a little bit more clear. And remember the formula for a difference of squares. If we have a squared minus b squared, this is equal to the product of two binomials where we have the first one minus the second one, ignoring the squares, and we will multiply that by the first one plus the second one. So when comparing this to our expression, we can see that a is x squared and b is six. So we can rewrite this down here as x squared minus six, it's the first one, ignoring the square, minus the second one, ignoring the square. And then we multiply that by the first one plus the second one, again, ignoring the squares. And comparing this to step one in Sean's work, we can see that we have the exact same thing, just the order of this is switched, but that's okay because it's multiplication. Now, at this point, we can continue factoring. We again have a difference of squares here. You just have to recognize that six can be rewritten as the square root of six squared. And we can again apply that formula there. Now for this second expression, this is a sum of two squares, where again you would write six as the square root of six squared. And for a sum of two squares, we need imaginary numbers. So when we have a squared plus b squared, we can rewrite this as the first one minus the second one, but multiplied by i, where i, remember, is just the square root of minus one. And then we multiply this by the first one plus the second one, multiplied by i. And we can apply our difference of squares formula here for this first one, and our sum of squares formula for this one. So let's continue doing that. For this one here, it, it's first probably a good idea to rewrite these more explicitly as x squared minus the square root of six squared, and likewise for this one. And that way we can see more clearly that we do in fact have a sum of squares and a difference of squares. But once we write this out more explicitly, we can now use the formulas. So for this first one, we would have the first one minus the second one, ignoring the squares, and then we add them, first one plus the second one. And for our sum of squares, we do the same thing, but then the term we're adding and subtracting, we will just add in the imaginary unit i. So we have x minus i root six and x plus i root six. And of course, at any step of the way, we can re-multiply everything out using distribution to double check our work. So checking these is fairly straightforward. It can be a bit tedious, but when you're first practicing these, it's definitely a good idea to re-multiply it out and check along the way. So this is our final answer, but now let's compare the work. And for step two, it looks like Sean took the sum of squares and rewrote it using the formula here, but he should have for six, the square root of six squared, and he ended up with the square root of three. 
So in both of these spots, it should be root six rather than root three. In fact, if we use the other method and actually just multiply this out, we would end up getting x squared plus three rather than x squared plus six. So it looks like step two is where the mistake was made. And if this was correct, the next step would be to factor this into x plus root six times by x minus root six, which is exactly what we have. So step three looks okay, and step one we know is okay, but step two, again, factoring this sum of squares, that's where he made the mistake. So it looks like choice letter B is the correct answer here.